right, everyone, we're gonna continue uh, with Epi now. So we already talked about Epi pens. We briefly talked about Epi vials, but now we're gonna show you the Epi ampules, which is the new hit thing for you EMT basics to learn how to administer Epi. Chris, why are they doing that? Why aren't they just carrying Epi pens? That is a great question, I, and I think it's because uh, one, this is um, a lot cheaper, right? Epi pens are now like a million dollars a pop, so this is a lot cheaper than that, um, and it's. Just a lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah, I mean that really basically is it. I mean, eight EpiPens went from about 150 bucks for a pen to about 800 dollars, and uh, so stocking EpiPens is super expensive. I mean, getting a vial of this is probably about eh, maybe a buck a vial. So big, big difference. Big difference. And you know what? I've also recently learned. What's that? Very recently, that we're off. We're often underdosing peats. Yeah. Yeah. So we can now give uh, more accurate doses for peats. Right. I've so, learned that. Very recently. Instead of giving an EpiPen with 0.15 milligrams, yeah. you're using 0 0.01 milligrams per kilogram. Mm -hmm. So if you had a 20 kilogram kid who would, so the cutoff is 66 pounds or 30 milligrams. For an adult or 30 kilograms. and a peds pen. Right. right. So at 30 kilos, less than 30 kilos, we would be giving a pediatric dose. But let's, so that would be 0 0.15 on an EpiPen. But let's say that you will have a 20 kilogram kid. So if you're using 0 0.01, you'd be giving 0 0.2 Two milligrams. milligrams. So that's more than EpiPen. Yeah. So anybody from 20 kilos to 30 kilos is really getting underdosed with a pediatric pen. So it's really actually much better to be able to, be able to draw it up and, and dose more appropriately. So. so just to make sure we're all on the same page, if your agency carries EpiPens, you are giving 0.3 milligrams to adult, 0.15 to a kid, but if you are drawing it up in a vial or an ampule, which we'll show you in a second, the dose for an adult is 0.3 to 0.5 milligrams. And for peds, it is 0 0.01 milligram per kilogram to a max of the lower end of the adult dose of 0.3 milligrams. And we already mentioned how it works. And we should also talk about the side effects of Bepi. Um, because it's an alpha one, beta one, beta two, uh, the beta one makes some tachycardia, they can feel a little dizzy, some tremors, nausea, vomiting, anxiety, um, restlessness, some pallor from the vasoconstriction, and some sweating. But the benefits of uh, not letting them die from their anaphylaxis far outweighs the anxiety and nausea, vomiting that they may get from uh, the epi. All right, so let's walk through how to uh, assemble everything. I have a one milliliter syringe because these are, um, this medication is one to a thousand, which means one milligram, what is it? One milligram and one milliliter is one to a thousand. I have uh, a glass ampule. Now we, with glass ampules, we have to have two needles because when I break the glass, some glass shards are gonna find their way into that liquid. Could. Could. Um, and so I need to use a filter needle, which means when I suck up the medicine, it will prevent the glass from going into my syringe. And then I need to change out to a needle, um, a delivery needle. I'll call it a delivery needle. So I suck up the glass in my filter, I change it out for a delivery needle into my patient. Um, it's important to not use the filter needle to inject into your patient because you will inject glass into them. It is important to not use the delivery needle to draw up the medicine and then put it in the patient because now you'll certainly put glass in them if you there is glass in there. So I have that. And then if you can see on this ampule, there might be medicine in the tip. So if I flick it, you can see the medicine starting to fall. And there's a blue ring at the base of the ampule. That's the score around it. So I'll take my gauze. I'm going to be safe. I have personal protective equipment on me. It's, um, uh, it's imaginary, but I'm going to be using PPE. I'm going to break it away from me. And then what do you think is gonna happen when I turn this upside down? All right, so I'm gonna turn it upside down. Actually, let me get everything ready before I do that. I'm gonna get my syringe. I'm going to put my filter needle on it. I'm gonna put that right there. And then when I turn my ampule upside down, it's all gonna pour out and I'm gonna have to do this process all over again. But it doesn't because of 
surface tension or something like that. Just tension, water tension, some black magic physics. All right. So now what I'm going to do through the power of video, I'm going to put my needle in the ampule. It's going to be hard for you all to see. I'm just going to admit that, but huh? what? Go ahead. just waving this around. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it in here and draw up as much as I can, but making sure that my needle is below the level of the, of the air. So I'm actually drawing up the medicine and it's my filter needle that I'm doing this with. I'm going to get as much as I can because I don't have to give it all to my patient, but I want it all as much as I can. And I got as much as I'm going to be able to. Now I'm going to pour out any air that I managed to glom up and I really did not do a good job, but it'll be okay. Any air that I got out. There we go. And now, so how much is in that needle? Oh, look, I got 0.4 milliliters, which means because it's a, a one to a thousand, I have 0.4 milligrams. So I don't have to give to my patient all of that. I'll just give them the 0.3, but I could waste it. But you, you want to, there's still more in here and I could have drawn up a little more. So usually when you draw up drugs out of an ampule, if it says you have one milliliter, the manufacturers usually put a little bit more in the ampule or the vial. So you want to make sure that once you've drawn it up, go ahead and uh, squirt out whatever you don't need so I you have exactly so I have, 0.3 I have milligrams. I exactly 0.3 okay. milligrams now. Right. And how do we measure this? So if you want to look at this syringe, I don't know if we can see this here. This is your black marking marker at the top of that black should be aligned with the three mil, uh, uh, with the marker over here, right? So we're at 0.3 and it should be lined up. I don't know if it is, I didn't look at it yet. It is. Yes. Yep. Yeah, it is good. Okay. So it's that second black marker and there's still some air bubbles in there. So we're going to flip those out. Now they're gone. And I'll pass you the syringe back. Yeah, I don't know what happened to my, um, there it is. Could you uh, hold, yeah, wheel that over here. Put it over here. So anytime, recapping a needle is the most dangerous part of needles. So I like to put it on the bench and just instead of using my other hand, pick it up that way. That's the safest way to do it. This is my filter needle. I'm going to put this in a sharps container and then I'm going to use my drug delivery needle, which is now clean and ready to be used, but it can still be capped until I'm ready to give it. Okay, we'll pan over to our dummy over here. <laughs> yep. Um, so our landmark is two finger widths below the acromion process. So you should remind yourself of anatomy of the scapula, but basically I'm just gonna feel it is right there, two finger breaths below. I'm going to replace Lynn with uh, now a, it's a hunk of flesh. <laughs> Lynn, could you hold this? I'll, I'll hold my arm on. Yeah. Um, I want to sanitize the area with an alcohol pad. I'm going to do big circles starting in the middle and fanning out all the way around as much as I can. I'm wearing my PPE. The scene is safe. How long is that needle, Chris? Oh, it is one inch. You're going to stick a one inch needle in it? Yeah. So, it might look long. It might look long. But... For an it IM, does the remember, job. this is going in the muscle. For an intramuscular injection, you must use a one to one and a half inch needle. That is high. Now, if you have a very thin, skinny arm, uh, you don't have to inject the needle the whole way. But uh, you, you can't use anything shorter than one inch because that muscle is buried down there. Mm -hmm. Typically, we're also using about a 22 gauge. You don't want to uh, use anything bigger than that. So remember that with gauges, as you go down in number, so a 20, an 18, a 16, the, the smaller the number, the bigger that needle is and fatter that needle is. So 22 gauge is a typical injection needle. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So to make sure I get the muscle, I want to flatten the skin out, not over where I'm going to inject because then I'll just contaminate my spot. And then I'm going to go 90 degrees down and ah! oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming. Too. And then as I go in, I aspirate to make sure I'm not in a blood vessel, which I'm not, thankfully. And then I put it all in, and then we're done. And I would recap.
No, nah, you wouldn't. You'd throw it right in the I throw it that way, yeah. I would recap and then throw it in the sharks. Nah, yeah, you're not going to recap. I'm not going to recap. Nah, nah, okay. Nah, after that, just nah, throw it in the sharks. Just throw it in the sharks. It's in the sharks. All right, I'm going to take my arm off. And reassess. And uh, her, as your anaphylax is better, ma'am. <laughs> Damn it. <I'm> gonna, <laughs> you could give repeat doses um, as needed. About every five minutes. About every five minutes. Yes, yeah, about every five minutes. So if someone isn't significantly improved in five minutes, you may need to repeat the uh, repeat the injection, whether that's an EpiPen or whether it's this. Okay. All right. Yeah. We're done. We're done. Good job. Good job. <laughs>